Hello, Grey Couch family. This is Stanley. And it's you too. And we just want to say thanks again for joining us, tuning mm-hmm. in with us. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll jump right in. Mm-hmm. Today, we wanted to talk about secret sauces, you know, and every now and then people kind of ask us, what would you say is a secret sauce for mm-hmm. a lasting, thriving marriage? Mm-hmm. And uh, the secret sauce is really not being lovers, as crazy as that sounds, but actually being friends. And mm-hmm. the first question is exactly, what exactly are we saying as a friend let's uh, let's frame that up i know because it's confusing right as a parent they hear them say you are not your children's friends don't try to be your children's friends you're their parent but now for the spouse they're saying be a friend right i think if you think about friendship a friend is somebody that you know you like you like and you trust, you trust. right yeah. so i always say this thing that you can love someone but not really like them mm. and what i mean like them is like how they're presenting or like how they're behaving at this particular instance because you know you have children if you have children you know what i'm saying like you you love them with everything but and sometimes you want to just strangle <laughs> them so, like irritate it right like what's going on i think the same thing too happens you know in in marriage yeah, just, where as much as you love your husband or wife there are sometimes when frankly they're irritating you or they just you know get to be really annoying but it's the friendship so part, that's when the friend part right comes in. in yeah because you know no if someone is your friend you can say to them hey cut it out <laughs> <laughs> so what about then when you put someone in love with that oh my my partner is my best friend mm-hmm. but then you don't act it out mm-hmm. you don't have friendly thoughts feelings or sometimes statements you know <laughs> i don't have a friendly thoughts so it's god that will help you with that one because sometimes there's no thought that is just like uh you know but um yeah it, you you can grow that muscle though you mm-hmm. can grow the um friendship muscle and i always say because you're talking about adults both people have to be in sync about this right one person cannot be growing a friendship muscle with a person who does not Want want to. that dynamic because some people um you know they do prefer the hierarchical right it's mm-hmm. like I'm the man, you're the woman, let's just keep it that way, right? Um, in those instances, it's like, okay, you know, the first thing would then be to influence the other partner to recognize we're in this together, right? We're here to um, get to a final destination, but while we're getting to destination, let's enjoy the journey, right? In that sense, so, yeah. I think another way to put it is that one when one realizes that being friends is in my personal best interest Mm -hmm. (laughs) because i get the fringe benefits from Mm -hmm. that i mean it becomes a question of fringe benefits uh (laughs) see another episode for that (laughs) question of which fringe benefits i'm talking about okay Mm -hmm. so the question of becomes what's the best way to either remain friends or if you are currently out of alignment in your friendship status how to come back to being friends and um i i think that one way is to see what's in it for you and your relationship if you have a great friendship that way it becomes a question of almost self-preservation but the self being the relationship not the marriage relationship preserving it at whatever cost and if we define a friend as someone that you know like and trust mm-hmm. the question that becomes what are little tips that you're doing to build up that trust mm-hmm. you know so something that we do personally is to to build up our, our friendship trust muscle our friendship trust model is that we um we develop our love banks mm-hmm. as in you make sure you have a positive account like you have your account is not in deficit and that is you know like if somebody is your friend if you went somewhere you are thinking about them you will buy them something you will do uh little things right that make them sure i'm thinking about you i feel like you know when you talk about this thing people think it's something complicated but it's just the little little things that you will do right if, if i went to the market and i saw a dress right i feel oh my friend is going to like this then i i'll buy it and send to them nothing there's no birthday there's nothing it's just you know over time i'm just showing them that um you know um like the affection I have for them has mm-hmm. not waned, mm-hmm. right, in that sense. And so I think in marriage it becomes interesting because it's sometimes the most mundane things that tend to show that person that you're thinking about them, right? It's not, the roses are good. I mean, we were just talking about this the other yeah, day, right, yep. with our people. And that the roses are good, but, you know, sometimes 
depending on the stage of marriage and the stage of life that you're in, you may just be changing diapers. That is the, you know, affection thing of, hey, I know, you know, it's a little bit stressful right now. Let me check the child and go and change the diaper without, you know, without you being told, right? Oh. Things like that. So it's those little things that just show, hey, I'm I'm necessarily thinking about you. And the more you do them, the more you're building into, the more you're depositing into the bank, right? Because what happens with this bank idea, which is not our idea, is from, um, you know, John Gottman and the relationship ad advice that we've gotten from that, process over the years is that at some point for some relationships right you look in the bank and there's nothing so there's even nothing to draw from and this is what happens with some friendships right where you look over the years and you realize there's nothing here anymore like we're not friends we've drifted apart right so that drifted apart can also happen okay. in a marriage if you're not consciously right depositing into the love bank okay. I mean, something that we do is, and I like it when you do is that, how almost like you ask me, okay, what's going on at work today? This person, what happened at work today? And then I was kind of like, oh, who is the current villain at work? Or who is your ally at work? You know, and it's always shifting, yeah. you know? So if, if once I did like 10 years ago mm -hmm. and nine years ago, you're like, oh, that, all, all that has changed. And also vice versa. Mm -hmm. Or oh, when you are younger, this was the goal that you had. And then later on, after all this, essentially something you do for a friend. I just feel that sometimes there's a there's a lot less pressure as friends mm -hmm. than as love relationship, mm -hmm. you know. And mm -hmm. so that to take for example, uh, both of us are dating and we're friends. And then I come and tell, hey, I want to go and watch this the football game. I want to go and watch the match, you know. I'm like, oh, kudos to you. Enjoy your match. But but if we are go with you. Um, but if we are married, you know, I want to go and watch it. I want to go and watch it. First and concern, I wait, so, so first of all, when is that going to happen? Mm -hmm. What about this that mm -hmm. we're supposed to do? The parents, the in-laws, the kids, mm -hmm. if you have kids and all that. And it just kind of muddies the water as in for, for lack of a better thing. But mm -hmm. this depends your friends are okay, you go do you, enjoy your enjoy yourself. Mm -hmm. And you come back, I'll have something to do or we can do it together, mm -hmm. you know. So just that thing that the secret sauce is really um staying friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the reverse of that, though, is that if a person is your friend, then they will look and say, what's the best time that I can go for the soccer game, right? That will um, not inconvenience my friend, you know, uh, indiscriminately, mm -hmm. right, in that sense. And so there's that little bit of uh, planning that goes into it because another person is being considered. Right? I feel like it's the consideration. It's not to say you will not do your soccer, but if, let's say, there was a game every day for seven days, then you may say, you know what, on Wednesday, let me just um, let me hold thing. up and, you know, do something in the house or things like that. Right. So it's a it's a very um, it's a dance I would mm -hmm. say, mm -hmm. right? And it's a shifting, it's a dynamic. That's what I talk about dynamics because it's not static. There's no one, you know, one way for everything, mm -hmm. right? Just have to consider. And that is the consideration. So you like, you know, and you trust, right? You trust that the person will do what is in the best interest of the friendship. friendship. Yep. Yeah. So question for you now, what now happens when you falling apart or you are not so friendly mm -hmm. what 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 um what antics do we use when we're not so friendly because it's inevitable that mm -hmm. okay something will do something step on your toes you know mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. what antics do we use to get back into the friendship um cycle uh, i don't know if it's you know friendship cycle in that sense but are you saying that mm -hmm. when things are not going well how what do, are you, the re how do you, that reconcile? you reconcile reconcile yeah right um well i mean you can literally say hey i sense things are not going well right mm -hmm. and then the other person may be like what do you mean and then you can say oh you know when this happened that happened you know but every time we say this i feel like people think maybe it's an easy process it's not because as a human being you don't want to seem like you are complaining or you are being needy or it's like oh you know i will not exist without this relationship so it's a very fine dance to not make it seem as though you are complaining right and here's the thing we're we're used to complaining about tangible things as opposed to the intangibles right so 
as opposed to me saying, oh, I haven't spent time with you lately. Like, ah, I miss you, right? Something like that. I, I, you know, if you're a friend to a person, I mean, maybe this is for women who, who you're used to telling your friend, ah, I miss you now. I miss our friendship. I miss us going on X, Y, Z. Oh, I miss, you know. But sometimes it's like for the spouse, it becomes a different thing. It's almost like if you say you miss the person, then you're being like a baby or something like that. And so many people want to enter into this hardened state of... <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't want I to, don't feel, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to feel like I'm the one here, but you know, I feel like those things, there are moments of tenderness that if you told somebody, I miss you, right? It lets that person know, oh, okay. I'm being held in high regard here, mm -hmm. right? That's kind of for me. And so, you know, rather than saying, I miss you, then you say, ah, you didn't come to the market yesterday mm -hmm. with me, you know, that kind of thing. And so you throw it, you love it out as a complaint or as some sort of criticism, but you're not addressing the underlying uh, thing okay. there. You know what I mean? Like, you know, and if you, if you, if you don't want to say I miss you, you say, you know, I really like it when you come okay. with me on X, right? It makes me feel this way. So you're still um, letting the person know I hold in high regard and this is why I kind of would appreciate if you did x and y with mm, me mm. you know but it, it's hard right because no one wants to feel like they're the um i guess dependent one what? here right in that sense so yeah i miss you <laughs> <laughs> i miss you too mm. Mm. <laughs> uh, okay uh well yeah, yeah. okay well that's what we have for you for this week. Uh, the secrets we miss you. you, meet you. <laughs> secrets are sustained from. So what what uh, uh, can you do in the week to show your segment other than mm -hmm. uh, that you miss them? Wait, I was going to say more than more than just a lover that you are a friend. You know, uh, I think it will add some spice to the relationship. So yeah. from our couch to yours. Uh, bye for now. I will see you next week. Bye bye. bye.